On today, we're going to be looking at uh, the 23rd Psalms. Uh, and I, I know for some of us, you know, we can quote it, we can say it verbatim. Uh, and, and it's one of those Psalms that is is brought out mostly during funerals and things of that nature. We we hear it uh, read and, and things of that nature. But I want to look at it today in sort of David's perspective. But I also want to give you the title first. Now, the title of this message that the Lord has given to me is uh, what is in your valley? What is in your valley? And I, I like it because sometimes it's, it's good for the, the, the preacher, evangelist, minister or whoever is speaking to pose a question first. Because then uh, that same preacher, teacher, evangelist, or whoever that is speaking, then has to give the answer uh, within the message. So on today, I'm, I'm going to try to answer that question, what's in, what is in your valley? Now, let's, let's look at it here. Let's look at it. In, in Psalms, the, the 23rd division of Psalms, rather, we see that this psalm is being written by David. David is writing this psalms and he is expressing something that he was feeling or something that he was going through at that particular moment in his life. Now, uh, it's, it's only six verses, so so if you will, I, I know we we know it. As I said before, we quote it. Uh, uh, some is not even going to get their word out and open it up to follow along to look at it uh, because you've heard this Psalms. But but I just want to read it real quick and then we're going to get into uh, the, the, the meat of what God has for us on today. So Psalms, the 23rd Psalms, it says, this psalm was a psalm of David, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, these, are, these next three verses are where we're going to find our foundation for uh, the answering of these questions. The fourth uh, verse says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then it says, Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Uh, thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Last verse, it says, Surely goodness and mercy. Oh my God, keep those two together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, as you guys know, and most of you know, I like to give some uh, background on what this scripture is, is, is talking about or the writer of the scripture. Now, we find that David is writing this uh, Psalms. David is writing it. And, and, and I, I want to real quick tell you just a snippet about uh, David. Now, I understand that most of us, uh, quote unquote, Bible scholars understand who David is. We know that uh, David was the, the one uh, that, that killed Goliath. That's all good. But David was uh, the eighth son of Jesse, a Bethlehemite. And in that, David uh, was that one that went to see about his brothers in the battle when they were fighting against, uh, when Saul was down in the valley area, fighting uh, against the, the Philistines. And, and we know the giant Goliath comes forth and uh, he, he's threatening the uh, people of God. And David, uh, with the spirit of God in him, stepped up and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Please, I, I hope hope you don't mind me giving you some background. David was that one that said, how dare you, you uncircumcised Philistine, defile the army uh, of God. And then we know that David went in the brook, picked up five smooth stones with his son and smote and killed Goliath. But we also know David as a great warrior. David was that warrior that when he went out and he was in Saul's army and they come back praising, they said, David kills, uh, Saul kills a thousand, but David killed 10,000. So we know David was a warrior. We also know David was a, a, a musician. He played the harp. And whenever Saul got into some type of uh, a situation where an evil spirit or something would come upon him, David would play Saul happy again. We, we understand that uh, David 
was the second king or one of the, the second greatest king that the uh, children of Israel ever had. We, we understand that David is an eloquent writer because David wrote uh, quite a bit of these Psalms. And you can see in his penmanship how eloquent and how good of a writer he was to put pen to paper to give us these encouraging Psalms in which we have on today. But now we, we I know some are saying, but David did some sinful things. Absolutely. David was the one who had Uriah killed in battle because he wanted to, he, he had laid with his wife and got her pregnant. I understand it. And just like David, we all have our faults. Just like David, we all fall short sometimes. But David uh, did something that most of us need to understand what we need to do. David re repented. And when David repented of what he'd done after the chastisement of God and after the punishment of God uh, of taking away that child that they had, but then God allowed him after the repentance to have a child with Bathsheba, which was now called Solomon. And, and we know about Solomon, most of us. But God truly blessed David after uh, even when he uh, had committed that sin, but God blessed him and used David like never before. He was a great king. So, so I just wanted to give you some background on who David was before we really jump into these uh, three scriptures here. Uh, uh, David, David was that one uh, that's writing this Psalms and he finds himself in a situation. He finds himself uh, realizing that that through life he's going to go through some valleys. Come on, let me let me get there. Let me get there. So so where we uh, start off with this message is I posed a question. I said, "What is in your valley?" Now now we see here that that David uh, is is putting pen to paper and he's talking about though he walks through the 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 valley of the shadow of death and and, and we're going to get there but but I want you to understand that uh, what what you need to know about a valley is is usually it's between some mountains usually it's between uh, uh, two uh, big mountains or or two mountains that uh, come together or, or begin to merge at the bottom and in that uh, mountain uh, thing, you have to understand that sometimes before you can even experience uh, the, the mountain uh, top, you have to go through the valley. You have to go through some uh, low estates. You have to go through some uh, low points before you can get to the mountain. You can't not. You can't start on top of the mountain. Uh, you first have to go through the valley. Oh, please stay with me for a moment. Uh, uh, some uh, some of us can't live all the time on the mountain uh, uh, be, uh, with with the Lord for extended periods of time because sometimes flesh and sometimes who we are and sometimes worldly things come in and it just uh, distracts us uh, and we get too busy body by the atmosphere on the mountain. We're going to get there. We're going to talk about it. The atmosphere on the mountain that, that it then brings us back down that we have to go back down to the valley. Uh, we, we, we reach the mountaintop. Uh, we live up there for a while and, 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 and then comes the storms. The storms of defeat, the, the winds of discouragement, the, the obstacles that, that we have to climb and that we have to uh, step over and, and they come out from underneath our foot and, and, and we find ourselves falling back down to the valley. But but but, but real quick, I, I, I don't want to stay on the mountain, but, but on that mountain, we have to understand that the atmosphere is different on the mountain. When you go up on a mountain, you have to understand that you're going to face many levels of atmospheric phenomena. You're going to start off and you may be hot, but when you get midway, uh, there's something that may happen. You may start feel a, a lot colder. And then when you get to the very top, it, it may be frigid up there. So, so you have to understand that even on the mountain, you're going to suffer some things. Even on the mountain, you're going to have to deal with some obstacles. But up there on the mountain, the atmosphere is more tense because if you do some research and you see this thing that we when you on the mountain, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to uh, bring forth a bunch of different uh, things that you have to face. I, I believe going through the valley is going to prepare us for the mountaintop experience. Uh, it's going to allow us to understand what we're facing when we get up 
to the top of the mountain. Uh, we, we, we're going to uh, face some surprises and, and we're going to have to adjust ourselves uh, uh, when we reach that mountain. So that valley experience, oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, what is in your valley? That valley experience is, is where you're going to gain what you need to make it to the top of the mountain and allow you to sustain yourself while you're up there. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, say that that this this mountain is is not uh, climbable, or or we're not going to be able to climb and, and get up on that mountain. But but you need to understand that on that mountain climb, there's going to be some some rocky, sharp surfaces that you're going to have to uh, traverse, that you're going to have to go over. Uh, you're going to have to watch for falling rocks that that come down, and and you're going to have to watch for mudslides. You're going to have to watch for avalanches and and severe thunderstorms and, and things. And it's stronger lightning uh, uh, if you do your research on top of a mountain and when you walk up on the mountain that's why you have to seek shelter in a storm because you are now a lightning rod for that lightning oh my god we're going to go somewhere because some people once we get to the mountaintop we have to understand there is some ones that want to destroy you while you're up on the mountain there's some ones that want to try to uh, bring you down and, and trip you up and, and disrupt your atmosphere on the mountain so it's important for us to go through the valley I, I understand that when we get up there, uh, there there's going to be a, a different level of breathing when we get up on the mountain See, when you climb up on the mountain, you have to then begin to understand that there are some breathing uh, differences that's going to take place because up on the mountain, the pressure and the atmosphere changes. On the mountain, sometimes, I'm um, get to the valley, but on the mountain, sometimes you have to understand that the pressure gets so heavy that it begins to clog your ears. That's why when you're taking off on a plane, as you're going up in the altitude, the pressure begins to make your ears feel as though you can't hear. Oh, that's very important because when when we realize uh, that while we're climbing the mountain and up on the mountain, sometimes God is talking to us, but the pressure uh, of being up on the mountain blocks us from hearing what God has for us. On that mountain, we find ourselves going through uh, some fog or, or going through some mist uh, uh, where we can't really see our way where we're going uh, and on the mountain, but the valley is what prepares us for the mountaintop experience. So, so, so I'm, I'm done with the mountain for, for a moment, but let me address that question. What is in your valley? Because some of us understand that some valleys are narrow. Some valleys are, 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 are wide and, and some have rough ground and some have smooth ground. And, and most uh, uh, times uh, uh, it, 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 the, the, the valley uh, poses its own challenges and obstacles within itself. In the valley, we, we find that, that, that some people go through some rough times. In the valley, we find that some people suffer in their marriage. Uh, either one or two is still in the valley when the other one is trying to make their descend to the top of the, uh, to the mountain. But that one that's with them is dragging them and say, I'd rather stay in the valley and I'd rather stay down here where uh, the atmosphere I'm used to. And, but uh, you go ahead and climb up and then there's a disconnect. So, so sometimes uh, you have uh, people uh, in that valley moment that want to stay there, but but we can't stay in the valley. That's why he said, though, I'll go through and, and we're going to get there. But here we find that uh, even uh, there's multitudes of reasons why uh, we have to stay in this valley before we climb. Uh, and I know somebody uh, today understand what I'm talking about. I know somebody today knows exactly what I'm talking about. Every time you try to uh, uh, go up the mountain, every time you, you decide to say, I'm going to uh, start my uh, uh, ascend up this mountain, something down in the valley uh, trips you up for a moment in time. But but there there's something in that valley that you need to understand. There's something down there. I don't care if it's it's a, a physical reason, an emotional reason, a, a spiritual reason, but sometimes we get so tripped up uh, by trying to go up that mountain because of the things that happen in the valley. But I, I, I like what uh, uh, David is saying here, uh, and I like how he's going to address 
this valley. If, if you're going to be successful in climbing the mountain, then you must recognize uh, what's in your valley. Now, here are the four things. Now, 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 now watch this here. The answer to these questions or to that question is found in these scriptures. It's found in verses four, five, and six. We, we're we're going to find it here. And, and, and guess what I'm going to do? You remember going to school and your teacher would uh, tell you or, or give you a math problem or equations or physics, whatever it is, give you some type of problem where there's an equation and you have to figure out the, the problem uh, by using the equation. Now, I'm going to give you the answers uh, to the uh, question, but you can't run ahead or you can't close the book and say, oh, well, pastor gave me the answer so I can run on now. No, you need to understand because sometimes the teacher says this. They say, I, I, I want, not only do I want the answer, but I want to see the work. Oh my God. They want to see the work. They want to see you figure out the equation so they understand that you know what you're talking about to get to that answer. Oh, here we go. So, so the answers are, the answers are here. Uh, in your valley, you're going to go through. Now, now these are just uh, four things that we may face in this valley. Uh, in this valley, we're going to face the shadow of death and evil. We're going to have to deal with that shadow of death and we're going to have to deal with the evil stuff that uh, is surrounding us. Uh, and also, number two is we're going to have to we, we're going to have to understand that God is there. God is there with us in the midst of our valley. We want to have to understand, too, that a rod and a staff is there in that valley. And, and number four, uh, answer to this question is goodness and mercy is there in that valley. So so I, 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 I know we, we, we just want to jump to the answer without writing out the equation or solving the problem or, or writing it out. That's how I was in school. I, I, if I knew it and I didn't need to uh, do the equation and fill it all out, then, you know, I just wrote the answer. But, but oftentimes uh, you have to work that equation out in order to see the end result to make sure you didn't miss a step along the way. Uh, we almost finish anyway. But here we find in verse four, and if you look in verse four, it says this, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now we have to understand in David's valley, just like most of ours, in our valley, we're going to have to go through a shadow of death. We're going to have to deal with some evil in our life, in the valley. Before we even get to the mountain issues and problems and, and situations, we have to understand what's in our valley right now. In our valley right now, there's a shadow of death. Now, now let me just put it this way. In our uh, shadow of death right now, now is some circumstances that the world is facing that is constantly shadowing us or, or with us. You can't walk anywhere without your shadow being there. A, a child, when they first realize that their shadow is there, they try to step, they try to look, and they even get fearful of the shadow that's behind them because they think it's something trying to get at them. But we got to face our shadow of death, uh, and, and we have to understand it's the emotional things uh, uh, that happen in our life and in our loved one's life uh, that constantly remind us uh, that, uh, that there's something happening uh, to them or to us. That's the shadow of death. Now, we also have to understand this shadow of death is we all have a moment and a point in time that we are going to leave here. Death is walking right along with us. Someone once said, the moment you're born, the second you're born is another second towards your death. So that shadow uh, uh, that, that David is talking about, he said, I understand that there's a, a death all around me. I, we have to understand he was a warrior. Uh, he, he was in a kingdom. And, and oftentimes people want uh, what you have. So he said, I understand that I'm going through this valley of shadow of death. But he said within himself, he said, but look, I got to remind myself that I'm not going to fear no evil. 
evil ain't going to stop me as I'm going through this valley of shadow of death. Even though I'm going through rough times in my life, I'm not going to allow it to destroy me. I'm not going to allow it to burden me down and stress me down and, and get me depressed and, and, and get me somewhere where I'm, I'm going crazy. I understand that death is on every side. I understand that the enemy is trying to destroy me. I understand that uh, he's about doing his business, but, but I got to understand like David said, he said, even though I'm going through this valley, he said, I ain't going to fear no evil. Oh my God, somebody better grab that thing here. Now, why David saying he's not going to fear no evil, uh, we have to uh, uh, go just a little bit further uh, down and, and understand just what David is facing here. In that first, uh, in that uh, fifth verse, uh, he said, thou has prepared a, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou has anointed my head with oil. Then he says, uh, my cup runneth over. So David understood that in my valley, I'm going to face some shadows of death. In my valley, there's going to come uh, that one that's trying to destroy me. In my valley, uh, I need to understand that I got to muster up enough strength like David and, and get my uh, giant killer gear on and get my understanding that, look, I understand God is able and I'm going to muster up enough strength to be able to face this giant uh, or this mountain that's coming ahead of me. So we need, to, we need to get that mentality in our heads. But in that verse 4 he says, for thou art mm, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comfort me. The most important thing you need to remember in this message on today, the most important thing you need to understand in this message today is God is with us. God is with you in your valley experience and God is with you in your mountaintop of sin. God is there all the time. Now that would be enough to answer the question, what's in your valley? That God and just leave it there and go on about your business. But but God, uh, he, he allows us to understand that he is there just like a shepherd is there. And when God is with us, uh, God said, I use my rod and my staff. Uh, the next part, the rod and the staff uh, to correct uh, and to make a decision or get you to make the proper decision. That's what the rod and staff is. So in the valley, as I'm going through, in the valley, as I'm not fearing evil, in the valley, he, God is with me and God is on my side. And look, if God is on my side, he's more than this whole rotten world against me. So, so if God's on my side, I'm all right. But I must understand that with God comes a rod of chastisement. With God comes a staff of correction. With God comes a staff of, of direction and decision making that I must make. Oh, somebody better get this on today. So he said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And just like a shepherd, when he's trying to lead his sheep, uh, when he's trying to uh, uh, steer them in the right direction or, or defend them off. Now, now that rod and staff uh, that the shepherd has, uh, it fights off the enemy. It fights off the wolves, the, the bears, and, and the, the mountain lions and things that, that try to come down or tries to enter into the valley to the, devour you and destroy you. And that a shepherd keeps that staff and keeps that rod to fight them off. David fought them off when he uh, when he killed the bear and the lion that, that was trying to come after uh, his, his father's uh, uh, sheep and all that. So we understand uh, that the, this rod and this staff means something. And with God, uh, uh, with that rod and with that staff of, of uh, correction and, and direction and decision making, it's helping us to go the right path. Oh my God, because in the valley, the valley is not just a straight through. The valley comes with some turns and, and some angles and some parts of the valley is wide and some parts of the valley is narrow and you have to find your way and maneuver your way through. But if you start going astray as the sheep go astray, that, that shepherd will tap them a little bit and correct them and make them make a different decision. Oh my God. 
So we find here that David is saying, uh, thou art with me. God, I understand that, that you are the, the, the one that created all things, that you are the one that did everything uh, for me. You know my, my ins, my outs, my, my lying down be, because I know someone said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I descend to the highest mountain, you are there. If I go to the very depths of the, the ocean, you are there. So there's nowhere I can hide from you. So God, I, I, I love the fact that you are with me as I'm going through my valley. So, so David understood that and that rod and that staff meant something more to him. The only way God speaks uh, to some of us is in the valley. Is in the valley because some Christians we get to the high peaks of the mountain and like I said before our ears uh, the pressure begins to clog our ears. When you get in the altitude, uh, sometimes you can't hear that well. Like I said with the plane, the plane is taking off and your ears begin to pop and clog up and you can't hear as good because of the pressure. Some Christians get to the, uh, uh, the mountain uh, and get almost to the peak of the mountain and they find themselves not hearing God as much uh, because the pressure up there got them focus on what they see and focus on the things in which they have uh, and focus on looking down and seeing the, the, the valley behind them that the pressure begins to, to build in their ear and they don't hear God. So sometimes uh, on the top of that mountain, uh, there's going to be some pressure issues and, and some pressure situations. Uh, and sometimes uh, if we're not careful, we can't hear God speak. Sometimes we can't hear what he's saying because of the pressure of being on that glorious mountain. Sometimes we get too high on the mountain that we can't even see our way. Remember I said there's some fog and mist as far when you start going up. The cloud cover is low and it covers the top peaks of the mountain. So as you're going up there, you can barely see. And sometimes uh, when we get to our mountaintop, uh, we fail to see that it was God that helped us get up there. It was God that was with us on in the valley. It was God that was preparing us down in the valley to allow us to ascend up to the mountaintop uh, where we feel as though there's no, there's no more problems, uh, where we feel as though there's no more pain or situations uh, because now I'm on the top uh, and now I can see uh, what was down in the valley oh yeah, we're going to get there. And in that valley now, once you get to the top, you are able to understand that what was in the valley seemed so small. Oh my God. But here we find that they get up to the mountaintop and they can't hear God anymore. It seems like uh, uh, God is speaking and telling them uh, there's some hidden dangers uh, and there's some new levels uh, of devils up on this mountain that you need to understand. God is saying you need to look clearly and we can't see because we're so busy by the fog and the mist. Uh, but oh my God, once the mist settles, uh, uh, once the dust settles, uh, we can see clearly the dangers that God wanted us to see. But sometimes we fall into that spirit of, oh, I can do it on my own. So sometimes uh, we have to get uh, uh, used to or acclimated to the pressure when we start that climb. And the valley is what going to prepare us. Living conditions on the mountain, as we said before, is different than living conditions down in the valley. There's different vegetation that grows in the valley that don't grow on the mountaintop. There's streams and, and still waters down on the bottom of the, the, uh, the mountainside uh, that near the valley that, 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 that sustains you with, with life of fish and, and everything else. Uh, there's vegetation that can be grown uh, down in the valley's part, but on the mountain it's so rocky that you can't get a good uh, firm ground to, to really plant or build something. So every now and then, guess what? It's good for us to come off the mountain and go down to the valley and understand it was in the valley that sustained me to get me up on the mountain. But I understand some of us too proudful and, and boastful thinking that we all that in a bag of chips as we used to say. And we forget because we up on the mountain what we had to go through down in the valley. Oh, somebody ought to be happy on today and say amen. 
mountain. But we find ourselves uh, uh, when we're on that mountain, we, we, we need to understand something here. And preachers, if you're tuning in, we cannot continue to tell people that everything is going to be a mountaintop experience. We got to let them know the sure enough truth. And I always tell people the moment they get saved that everything ain't going to be peaches and cream. Everything is not going to be all hunky dory and oh, let's skip along. You're going to face some trials and some tribulation. And we as ministers or preachers or whoever, we need to understand to tell the people that you're not going to spend all the time on the mountain. You need to understand that there's some situations that you're going to face even when you're on the mountain because a new level comes a new devil and they're going to try to knock you off your mountain. Come on, we played the game before when we had hills back in the uh, Williams Hole back there and, and we, we would go up on a mountain and we would try to tell somebody to knock us off the mountain and it was always somebody that tried to knock you off the mountain. The game I believe was called King of the Mountain and you would try to push somebody off the mountain. That's the same thing that happens in this world. So don't be so glorious that you're on top of the mountain because there's somebody up there traversing another side that want to knock you back down. Oh my God, let me get into this valley some more. But here we find that God is trying to get them to under, get us to understand that, yeah, though you're walking through the valley of the shadow of the death, you will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. His rod and his staff uh, is comforting me. It's, it's, it's leading me. It's guiding me. It's, it's, it's making me make the right decision. The valley in the valley area, uh, as I said before, you may find yourself uh, uh, at the, the floor or, or ground level. Ground level of success and, and now uh, uh, trying to conquer or, or trying to traverse or stay on top the mountain or make your climb on the mountain is going to be hard. But let me tell you something. And the only way you can make it up that mountain or start to climb up the mountain is you have to go through the valley first. But you have to understand, we're answering this question, what is in your valley? First thing we said was in our valley, we said there's going to be some shadows of death and evil. But just like David, David said, I'm going through. See, you're going through the valley. You're not stopping and dwelling in the valley. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Because some of us want to go walk through the valley and some of us want to stay in the valley. Remember I said somebody, uh, maybe marriages, one wants to go up the mountain and, and do better and get better. And the other one is complacent and say, I want to stay in the valley. But sometimes uh, you have to understand, I can't stay in this valley. So the thing we need to understand is, uh, first point, there's going to be some shadows of death following us no matter where we go in evil. And then the most important thing uh, to hammer home to you today is God. He said, thou art with me. And who's the thou? He's talking about God. He's talking about the Father. He's talking about the Son and the Holy Ghost. So he said, thou art with me. And he said, now because you're with me, I understand your rod and your staff is going to correct me and chastise me and point me into the right direction. Come on, I'm almost finished here. But see, we find that in this part, uh, even Joel said, Joel 3 and 14, he said, multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. He said, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. See, that rod and that staff is trying to get you to make the right decision in the valley before you even ascend to the mountain. So that in that valley, you're going to find yourself trying to make some decisions. I'm going to try to make uh, the right decisions on when to go up this mountain. Because on every side of the mountain, you cannot go up. Every side of the mountain poses its own uh, tricks, its own snares, and, and its own defeats. But you have to make a decision down in the valley. How am I going to handle this climb? And you prepare yourself uh, uh, down in the valley. You get what you need to take with you on the climb up the, valley, up the mountain in order for you to make it to the top. So in here, we, we find that in the valley, we, we making a decision because we're dealing with this thing called flesh. And this flesh and the spirit is fighting against each other. The flesh want to stay complacent and stay where it's at. But the spirit is saying, get yourself up. Y'all remember the message where it said, why sit you here and tie? The, 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 the spirit is telling you, get yourself up. But the flesh is saying, stay there. But you need to understand that the spirit man is stronger than the flesh man 
if you allow it to be. Oh, glory to his name. But we find ourselves warring with the spirit and flesh in the valley. But thanks be to God that David understood this thing when he said, God is with me and your rod and your staff, it comforts me. So we now understand what he's saying is, he's saying, I got to trust you, God, in the midst of me going through this valley. Because when I start my climb up to the mountain, there's going to be some situations that I'm going to have to face. And with you with me, me God and your rod and staff correcting me like you do the sheep it's going to make me go down the path that you would have me to go down oh glory to his name but here we find that we need God and we depend on his strength we depend on the strength of that rod to get us in the right position the only reason for staying in the valley is that we make uh, we don't make the decision to get up and start to climb the only reason uh, we stay in the valley is we find it a comfortable place. The only reason we stay in the valley is because I can breathe better down in the valley. But trust and believe the moment you start ascending uh, up to the mountain, God is with you and God is preparing you and God is steering you in the right direction. In your valley right now, now you have uh, uh, some decisions to make. In your valley right now, now, you have to understand that you have to get up and go forth and conquer that mountain. You can't stay in the valley with these four things uh, uh, forever. You have to now take them, learn from them, and go up on the mountain. Goodness and mercy. Let me get there. We almost done. Goodness and mercy is on the uh, is on the mount uh, in the valley, in uh, Luke, the the fifth chapter. No, Luke the third chapter, the fifth verse. It says this. It says, "Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth." Then in verse six it says, "And all." flesh shall see the salvation of God. Now he's telling Lon to let us know that in the moments and times uh, when we face these mountains and valleys, uh, in the moments and time when, when we're trying to traverse the terrain uh, and it seems like it's stony on this one side, it seems like it's rocky and sharp on another side, it seems like it's too smooth and, and we can't get our footing on one side, it seems like things are not going our way uh, we have to understand uh, that God said I will bring your mountain low. I will make it so that you can conquer the mountain, but you have to understand what's going on in the valley. God is saying, I can make every crooked place straight. I told you it winds, it goes around, and you can't just go straight up a mountain. You have to understand that sometimes you're going to have to wind around that mountain to find better footing to get to the top. Oh, somebody's getting happy on today. But we understand that God is saying, I will make the rough places smooth. I will make the crooked places straight. I will lead and guide you down the path in which you need to go. But God is saying, quit leaning to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge me. And he said, I will chastise with the rod of staff. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. Oh, somebody on today need to say, God, direct me. Hallelujah in this place. But when we get down to it and we jump back to the second verse, it says, he maketh me, oh, glory to his name, to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Oh, my God here. So what he's trying to get us to understand is even though there may be some rough places, even though there may be some hard times, God will lead you down. Hallelujah some green pastures. He will lead you beside some still waters because if it's all the time raging, we're going to get so depressed and get so burdened down that we're going to want to turn around and go back. But thanks be to God that God knows just what I need on today. Hallelujah in this place. But he said, I shall, hallelujah, make your, go through some green pastures. He said, I will lead you beside the still waters. Last verse I'm going to say on today. Uh, the Bible lets us know. In verse 3 it says this. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I believe David had to get that out first before he jumped down to that fourth verse.
verse. And he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because what came before that for first, he said, you restored my soul. I don't know about you on today, but you better call, ask God to restore your soul. Ask God to strengthen you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I need some strength. I'm facing a mountain, God, but in the midst of my mountain, I got to go through this valley. And God, because I'm going through this valley, you are with me. God, because I'm going through this valley, I understand you're fighting my battles. God, I know I'm going through this valley, and I know that something else is with me. Oh, somebody better grab this thing right now. The Bible says that goodness and mercy, oh, somebody better be glad on today. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So what he's saying to us today is God even though I go through this valley God the key word is through I can't stay in the midst of this valley but as I'm walking and marching as I'm taking two steps towards God you dispatch your angels goodness and mercy they are right beside me right now and leading me through wherever I need to go they are around me all day long because the Bible said we get new mercies daily so that yesterday mercy may not be able to deal with my today's mercy but thanks be to God that is sprinkled with some goodness and goodness is leaning hallelujah if I lean to the left goodness pushes me back straight if I lean to the right mercy straightens me back up and when I look straight ahead I'm focusing on God oh I got to close this thing but when I look straight ahead I'm focusing on God so goodness and mercy just like in an army keeps me in line and in tune as I'm walking towards God and I'm doing what God say do. Hallelujah. David said he restored hallelujah restorated my soul. He said he restored and lead me in the paths of righteousness. So even though I'm going through a valley what seems to be the shadow of death. David had enough encouragement to say, I fear no evil. Why do we not fear no evil? When we jump down to that verse and it says, surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. David meant that thing there. And we need to understand that means that that mountain is accessible. That mountain we can climb. That mountain we can go up. That mountain we can manage. But as we're going up the mountain, sometimes God wants to speak to us. Sometimes God wants to talk to us. Because each level we go up, each step we go up, we have to acclimate ourselves or get used to the level. So you go up a little bit and you take a breather for a while to get your lungs used to the pressure. Then you got to move up a little more. And then you take another pause and understand that you just got over that one pressure point. Now you got to adjust your pressure yet again because the pressures all around you are getting worse. But then as you get up a little further, the pressure begins to get heavy and you barely can hear or see. But thanks be to God, I got God on my side and God is going with me. Hallelujah. From the valley to the mountaintop. Oh, I got to close this thing here. But we have to understand that all things Thanks. Romans 8 and 28 all things work the good of them that love the Lord of them who are called according to his purpose because God is leading and guiding God is saying that everything's going to work out in due time excuse me, in due time. So you need to understand on today again what's in your valley. You need to do a self-assessment. You need to understand what's in your valley. And what's in your valley is only there to make you strong. What's in your valley is preparing you. What's in your valley is making you make a decision. What's in your valley is training you for the mountain experience. So on today, I then gave you the four answers to the question. So you need to make sure that you understand the answers to the question. And most importantly, you need to take God with you 
as you go up that mountain because I learned what was in the valley. But when I get to that mountaintop and God allows me to look down, I can see that valley and the valley looks so small. The valley looks so small that I've worried in that valley about nothing, about nothing. Come on, let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you just continue to move by your spirit. God, I ask that you bless your people. Each and every one that listen, each and every one shall hear this message, God. Lord, I ask that your spirit just goes into their places. Go right where they are, God. Lord, allow them to feel your presence, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, some of us are still going through our valley experience. Some of us are still going through our learning process. But God, as we see the mountains lying ahead of us, God, we understand that we have to go on over the mountain. But God, we just thank you right now for being with us. We thank you right now, God, for blessing us. God, we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing in our life. Lord, allow us to learn while we're in the valley. Allow and prepare us to God for the mountain. So God, we just thank you right now, God. Lord, we ask that you strengthen us. Strengthen us right now, God. Touch and heal the bodies, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, this resurgence of this COVID, dear God. Lord, we ask that you continue to block it from our dwelling place. Lord, you said no pestilence shall fall by our dwelling place. So God, we just ask you right now. Continue to keep it away from us, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, if you allow us, dear God, if it's in your will that we shall get it, God, we understand, God, that you are a healer, God. So God, we ask that you heal. Heal those, dear God. Heal those that are suffering. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we understand that you can do all things but fail. So God, we ask that you do it on today. God, continue to bless the first responders. Continue to bless each and every one, dear God, that have to be on the front lines. God, we ask that you again send peace in this nation, peace around this world, God. Lord, and I thank you and I praise you, God, because I count it done on today. I trust and believe, God, that you are already working it out. I trust and believe, God, that you have already prepared us for what lies ahead. So, God, now we need to say within ourselves, I see the mountain and I'm going to conquer that mountain because I learned what was in the valley. God, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Now, God, we ask that if someone is looking, God, we ask that you touch the unsaved. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, they may be crying out, what must I do to be saved, God? Lord, you said all we have to do is believe in you. Believe in the name Jesus and we shall be saved. Believe that he uh, was born virgin birth and, and that he died for our sins. Understand that we are sinners. And, and then we have to commit to his will and his way. So, God, we thank you right now because you made it easy for us to come to you. So, God, that one that is listening, that one that is watching, God, we ask that you just allow them to make that decision. Allow them to understand that they need you. Just like David said, thou art with me. So, God, please be with them on today as they make this decision. God, and we thank you and we praise you. In your mighty and master's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Mean it in your heart. God bless you.